Greetings. I am Hunter Miles Davis, a ranger here with New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, where our mission is to instill a public appreciation for the origin, history, and development of jazz in the city that it was born in. Today, I have the host of American Roots, Mr. Nick Spitzer, and he will be interviewing Ms. Aurora Needlands and the Aurora Needlands Quartet. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Because I'm coming loose from my stem Yes, I'm shaking like a leaf from a tree Because I'm coming loose from my man Well, I'm like a weeping willow Crying on my pillow
Ain't no sweet man, Aurora Neelan Quartet. Great tune. Thank you, Nick. Amazing lyrics. Yeah, great lyrics. Mysterious. Like, it's pretty cutting to be like, you're not even worth the... <laughs> yeah, I know, the imagery of the, that, image, the tears, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. salt uh, is pretty cheap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was... Uh, I, I go back to uh, your own eclecticism and all the things that you love. Uh, I, I know you spent time at Oberlin and not at the conservatory, but you studied music. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, but then you end up at the Ecole du Théâtre uh, Physical, uh -huh. Jacques Lecoq. Yeah. Right? That was excellent French. Whoa. And I didn't even study it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I studied in Cajun, Louisiana French. Uh, but I, I can kind of fake it. But I, um, why do you go to, a, a, I mean, a, as a performer, what did the being there at the, the physical theater do for you? The, um... It called the Théâtre, the, the Théâtre Physical Jacques Lecoq. Yes. It was, you know, I went there when I was 23, 22 or 23. Yeah. Um, I was really interested, and I still am interested in this kind of multidisciplinary work. And so um, right. a lot of the people that I was looked up to, uh, the artists that were making that kind of work, had gone through there, like Ariana Mushkin. Is a, she'd done a lot of, you know, political theater and social, these kind of large productions mm. and people that were, were associated with bread and puppet theater here in the States mm -hmm. and um, Julie Taymor. They had, a lot of people had gone through this um, Jacques Lecoq training, which is, was, I think, in the 70s, a very kind of revolutionary way to think about developing work collaboratively and across disciplines. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a whole beautiful pedagogy. I didn't. I I only lasted for two trimesters, and then I dropped out to tour with a women's soccer team in southern France. But I, I, as a musician or as a player? No, as a player. Oh yeah. Um, what what position did you play? I I played striker. Oh my god. Sometimes the you're right out front. Yeah, I, I don't know. You're in the middle. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you're the striker, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brad actually is a tutor. What is it? What is it called, Brad? A tutor for a he's a coach. A coach for for the jesters. Is that right? One of the goalies on the jesters. Now I'm a goalie for oh, are you? Yeah. Well, they need to get their rhythms in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a drumming. On coach penalty for kicks, the they have to decide when you know when when to start the beat. Yeah, <laughs> especially, but anytime. But anyway. Okay, so but, yeah, uh, out on the road, soccer. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, but the at the Lecoq School, they go through this beautiful mm. kind of uh, pedagogy that is really about. Um, Play and replay, and I think that that r applies also to playing music. Mm. It's called le jeu et le rejou. So the like, like you observe things. So you would do whole sections where you're studying colors, and so you observe colors, and then you think you see like how does that color move? Mm. How does that color interact with another color? Then you move on to uh, you do elements. You do water, wit, fire, mm. earth. I think, and then you eventually move on to like animals. So you look at like how does that animal move? And then you kind of transfer that to how does a human with a pigeon-like uh, quality move? So it's a way of kind of developing the of, pigeon of, people. The pigeon people, yeah. yeah. But I, it's I a really know. it's a really interesting way of sort of like observing and developing character, um, you know, in theater, but also in music. I think it applies yeah. of like this idea of especially this kind of music, which is so improvisationally based, is like you're observing and then you're. Uh, reflecting, given your observations of the real world, because the real world is strange. Yeah, and and you've been out in the real world too. If, if, not that theater isn't real, but uh, or or soccer for that matter. Sure. But you you rode across America on, on a bicycle, seeking out stories. I did. Yeah. That sounds like a folklorist. Uh, I can kind of relate to that. <laughs> Radio, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But you, yeah. I, I mean, so that's another way of gaining knowledge, talking to lots of people. For sure, yeah. I mean, that was a beautiful trip. I think, you know, it was not as intentional as a, when you're 24. It was just like, okay, I got $500 and I got this bicycle and I have a friend that wants to do this with me. And so um, we rode across the country um, recording audio interviews of what other people were doing when they were 25 because we were curious about that. Uh -huh. um, it was also during the... Uh, Carry Bush elections. So God, I barely remember. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so we were like curious what um, we were just curious about the climate of the 
of what it meant to be American yeah. at the time. So, yeah, I mean, so you're getting into the American side of life after some of that experience uh, experience abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So where does jazz fit in all this? I mean, you seem to love all, a lot of traditional jazz, but you like a lot of contemporary music as well. I mean, I, I mean, sure. how do these things fit, all fit together? You, you seem to do them seamlessly. Well, I think as we talked about before, it's, you know, their sound is really the medium and the, the, the message is the music. So it's like they're, they're not completely different genres. Um, I think that the lessons that you learn, especially being here and uh, playing traditional jazz or New Orleans jazz, or early jazz, the lessons that you learn about um, collective improvisation and ensemble playing are so valuable and they apply to all sorts of music. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, all of us have played a lot of contemporary and improvisational mu music or what has been called avant-garde music mm -hmm. for a long time, although I think that's a strange term. Yeah, I like avant rear guard myself. Avant rear guard, <laughs> yeah. A uh, back, you know, back and forward, uh, you know, continuity of culture and creativity. Yeah, uh, but but you need to, you also need all this to do well in a soccer field. That's yeah, yeah that collective true. improvisation. Collective improvisation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's everyone's got to play their part. But and those, uh, you know, those lessons are are certainly in New Orleans early New Orleans music, and they're also in you know music that was coming out of AACM and uh, music that's coming out of New York. Um, in the 80s and 90s and mm -hmm. composers that we see there. So um, I think it's it's mostly about you're in a room with, you know, in our case, three, I'm in a room with three other really fine mm -hmm. sound makers. So it's about trying to create something and craft something together. So uh, one of the times in our American life uh, that was important in changing music was when ragtime emerges at the turn of the last century. Sure. And, uh, you know, we associate it with St. Louis, I suppose, New Orleans, a sure, yeah. bunch of places on the river, starting to rag on Sousa, rag on everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got Temptation Rag. Yeah. We're going to do the Temptation Rag. 1909. 1909. And um, we've been really enjoying playing it with a little bit of a different feel. Um, this, this song, I will say, is as many of these songs... Um, I first came across them through live music, which is such an incredible thing here in New Orleans. So I first came across this song uh, hearing Evan Christopher play it mm. here in New Orleans. A uh, great sax player uh, and yeah, clarinet player. and clarinet player, yeah. Yeah, wonderful person. Yeah. Um, so we're going to play The Temptation Rack.
Temptation Rag. So great to hear that. Thank you. And, and would you say you played that with a New Orleans arrangement? Or, I mean, what kind of arrangement is it? Well, the, the form is based on um, the traditional rag, kind of rag form, you know, mm -hmm. of these three different sections. Mm -hmm. um, and then the feel, I think we were playing around with it. And um, I think it was Matt that suggested we, you know, we were like, what if we kind of play it with this a little bit of a different feel? That Latin references tinge. the Latin tinge, yeah. Oh, that the Latin the Latin tinge, tinge. which is all throughout New Orleans music. Yeah, for sure. And Jelly Roll Morton always reminded us of that. Yeah. Oh. Very and good. it's, you know, some of the best things about New Orleans music are things that were pulled from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and particularly from like Black Caribbean culture and Black Caribbean rhythm, rhythm. So it's it feels, I don't know, feels nice to to play it with that kind of feel. Well, yeah. I know you're drawn to all kinds of music and sounds, and, and you've spent a, your life really making those sounds and making new variants of them. But I think you also like songs, and I see Cole Porter here on the list. I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. what about Cole Porter? Well, I think we were thinking about American Roots, Nick, so we thought. Oh, thank this you. This is American. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up every day thinking about it. An American pop song. So I'm, I'm so glad. That makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, and this is a, a Cole Porter song that, I, again, it's, you know, as a sometimes singer, it's nice to sing songs where you believe in the lyrics and you find them interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also just a, a, a really beautiful jazz composition that's been recorded over the years. Okay. So uh, it's all right with me. It's all right with me. We're going to feature BC on this tune. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Place. Your face is lovely, it's the wrong face It's not his face, but what a charming place That it's alright with me Well, it's the wrong song, in the wrong style Though your smile's so very tempting, it's the wrong smile It's not his smile, but what a charming smile That it's alright with me well, you can't know how happy I am that we met. I'm strangely attracted to you. There's someone I'm trying so hard to forget. Don't you want to forget someone too? Well, it's the wrong game with the wrong chips. Oh, your lips are so very tempting. They're the wrong lips. They're not his lips, but oh, what a light. That it's all right with me
What a charming face That it's alright, it's okay with me with me cole porter song 1953 yeah. swinging with it yeah these guys yeah bc cougar on the piano oh my god everybody yeah wow hey now you know tell me you you know great saxophone and clarinet and other instrument player but how, how does it feel to sing a song what's the difference between your voice and and uh you know your musical voice or your instrumental voice terrifying no uh, <laughs> <laughs> um well, you know, these, these instruments that we play through, they let you amplify a certain timbre, and, a, and so you, to, you, you, know, you learn to use the expression that they have on the instruments. They're, and they're a tool. feeling. And a feeling, yeah. Um, but, but certainly, I would say, like, you're singing, you're singing through your horn yeah. um, in a way that old cliche is true. Right. Um, That's right. The voice is an instrument in its yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And, and the instruments are kind of voices. Yeah, and I think the, mm. the voice as an instrument, the, you know, I've been asked a couple times to teach voice, and I'm not a trained vocalist. Mm. Um, and I usually the, the most, the smallest lessons that I can give are really uh, to teach people to sound like themselves. Yeah. You know, that well, maybe that's your greatest, you know, I don't want to use authority with the capital A, but it gives you a sort of, uh, authority, authenticity by having your voice be your voice. Yeah, because no one else has your instrument, <laughs> that's you know. Right. So, and yeah. and um, I think that's the most kind of those are the artists that I'm certainly attracted yeah. to are people that really sound like themselves. And there's, yeah. you know, there's no way that I can sound like Mavis Staples as much as I would like to. <laughs> Better um, just to listen to Mavis. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, as much as I would like to sound like so many incredible singers out there. Um, you have to work with what you have. Yeah. Well, and then you also have to pick a song, and you like Cole Porter, and you like the sure, lyrics, yeah. so, so you're able to do that. You know, I was, I was reading, uh, you said at some point, uh, uh, there are beautiful people out there, and this society is hard. The way to set up, not everyone's born to fit in. Some people get lucky and figure yeah. out how to maneuver around this world, and some people don't. Yeah. And in life, you lost a brother? Yeah, I lost two brothers. Two brothers. Yeah. Mm. And so, I mean, and you you are somebody though. It seems to me that to give what's the word uh, succor, sweetness, kindness to a lot of people in your music Thank and you. your way of living. Yeah, I mean, I think a, a piece of that certainly is, um, you know, seeing some very sensitive. I think all of us have had experience with very kind, beautiful, sensitive souls that just don't. Uh, make it in mm -hmm. the confines of how society is set up life is hard time you know so yeah, harder for some than others yeah for sure either based on who they are what happens to them yeah in life and how they can deal with it or can't deal with it yeah yeah so i think a uh, piece of that is learning that you know kindness and generosity as much as you can is a real strength yeah you know and music music is something that gives people hope yeah. Allows them to express sadness, blues, for feelings. Sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Get things out. Yeah. Be proud of what they do. Yeah. Work harder. Do all kinds of music gives you all kinds of ways to Oh yeah. It's an live. incredible weapon. You know, yeah. I mean I don't want to weaponize it, but but <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes I do. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. 
That's right. No, yeah, I love it. An, I love it's it. An incredible yeah, I wouldn't do a radio show if I didn't love music and <laughs> bringing all kinds of it to people with the words and the yeah. sounds and all the things that are that are great. Um, but but I, I I know notice that you've got uh, Lucky Old Son on the playlist here and and uh, Beasley Smith song that's been I mean performed by uh, obviously I think we all know Louis Armstrong you know Dylan Sam Cooke Aretha. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis does a killer version of it. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, so there are a lot of great versions. It really is one of my favorite songs, and I think it maybe is because the idea that the sun is lucky. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, those of us down here on Earth, you know, we're sweating it out under the sun. Some of us are burned by the sun. You know, we're tired of the sun. Yep, but we need the sun, you know, to grow plants and But everything food orbits to eat. around it, you know? <laughs> you know? It's like... Give us a sense of uh, day and night and all the things the sun. I don't want to wax too cosmic, but but the idea in a song that the sun is lucky because the sun doesn't have to deal with all the things on Earth. Yeah. That's a wonderful thought. Yeah, it is, they're beautiful lyrics. They're really yeah, beautiful yeah. Lyrics. It allows you to kind of get outside yourself. Yeah. And this, again, I would say is just, um, you know, I, I learned the song from listening to the um, Ray Charles mm. version, which I learned after hearing... This is again an example of the live music, hearing music live brought me to this after hearing Shannon Powell sing You Don't Know Me, mm. um, which he was doing at Donna. Shannon Powell right here in New yeah, Orleans. Yeah, right here in yeah. New Orleans. And then I went and checked out the recordings and, and You Don't Know Me is on the same album as Lucky Old Son. Yeah, sometimes you just find these things. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I, one thing I like about radio over the years is that, uh, you know, you don't make an appointment necessarily to listen to the radio, but if a song comes on you've never heard before, you go, and you like it, you go, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that, that inspires me to try and find those songs for people and, and for myself. For sure. Well, sometimes, uh, you know, we also need a break from Lucky Old Son. I, were we indoors here? <laughs> Under air conditioning in New Orleans when uh, right now I think it's about 98 degrees outside. Ooh, it's, uh, yeah. So it's a privilege to sing about how lucky the sun is. This is a se <laughs> the second official day of summer is today. You know? Oh, is that right? Oh, summer is asserting we itself. We just huh? had the solstice on oh, yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. We'll mark that date. And uh, for those of you hearing it some other time, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that lucky old sun just keeps uh, rolling along. Rolling around.
me that river and then take me across and wash 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 all my troubles away to do oh, roll roll around heaven all day Great Beasley Smith song, Lucky Old Son, and the Aurora Quartet to bring it to life. Man, 
You guys, <laughs> there's some country in there. There's some blues. There's some jazz. Hey, some soul. Well, well, look at where these guys come from. So we hope so. Yeah, we hope <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah, South Louisiana and beyond. Yeah. Entertained, Nick. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, BC grew up with all these old, older piano recordings. I would say I feel like you know that music so deeply. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the country and blues feeling in it, as well as jazz, uh, does give you a, a wonderful sense of uh, the sun <laughs> and and uh, our troubles and trials here on earth. So, but yes. it, it seems to me, in the middle of it all, y'all are uh, quite blessed by your talents and abilities and uh, willingness to play together. I, I wondered, Aurora, you uh, you know there aren't that many women you think of uh, playing soprano sax. Or clarinet. Sure. Obviously, there's some great ones, but sure, yeah. but no, in numbers, not so many. And maybe more percentage-wise in New Orleans, I always think of the McDonough 35 band where I see, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, a section of uh, women trombonists. You know, sure. you know yeah. here come 12 trombone players. Here come 12 sax players. Here come. But but it's not like that everywhere. Yes. Uh, did, what's your sense of of the, the question of gender and playing horns and being a, a musical performer of the kind you are with such instrumental uh, ability. Well, how long do you have, Nick? I have a lot to say about <laughs> oh, this. Oh, I'll, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'll read the biography as told, <laughs> no, too. No. no, I mean, just, you know, you're, you're, you've, you, there are struggles always, but there's also triumphs. Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's changing. You know, yeah. um, I think a big, this kind of simplest thing that I can say is, you know, a lot of people learn to play music um, when you're younger and you're forming bands. A lot of for a lot of us in in the teenage years, and um, I think as a young woman that when I was coming up that wasn't happening so much, um, and it was harder to for young women to find people to play with, which is really how you learn to play. You know, a large. I mean, you can be alone and you can you can practice, and there's I mean, yeah. that is a huge, play along with huge records. chunk of how you yeah, learn right. to play, but mm. certainly like. Um, Playing music interactively is is a, an experiential learning process, mm. you know. So it's like either you're doing it in in the church, or you're doing it in school, or you're doing it in a garage, mm. depending on where you're coming from, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that when I was coming up, that wasn't as accessible to young women, or just didn't happen as much. You're not, you know, mm. um, or also you like maybe didn't have access to instruments. At the time, and I, I do think that is changing. You know, um, I see more young women instrumentalists um, coming up now, which is exciting. And and also, you kind of have to pass through a firewall at some point, also as a to learn whatever gigging culture that you're in. That you know, there is a lot of. I, I mean, I could write a whole book about this kind of strange interactions that I've had and many other women have had about like trying to get paid and mm -hmm. not getting paid and the band leader being like, well, come out to lunch with me or mm, have right. dinner with me, you know? So there's right. a lot of, uh, you got to kind of like toughen your skin to pass through some of those right. walls, I think, to kind of be able to get to a place where you're like, okay, I, I understand and I feel confident enough to ask these really wonderful musicians to, to play with me. Um, takes take some time but i do think it's it's changing let's be hopeful yeah i'm, yeah. I'm definitely hopeful yeah yeah hope hope is my per, my secular religion <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure why i'm so hopeful but i try to remain hopeful yeah uh you know in the social order in the family wherever i am yeah that's that's wise <laughs> yeah yeah i i don't think i have any alternative <laughs> the alternative is to be down and hurt and depressed. Yeah. You don't feel like you can't get anything done. Yeah. Well, um, you've got a, a tune here that you're going to have to explain to me. I, I believe Paloma is a dub. Mm -hmm. It is yeah, a dub. Okay, yes. I got that much. What's the whole name of this tune? Um, the whole name of this tune is Kukuru Kuku Paloma. Uh, um, could you locate that for us on the uh, the map? On the map, yes. It's a it's a pretty famous uh song from mexico mm -hmm. um and i was thinking about all the things that go into america and american roots and um sure and, and, and let's face it the new world uh r is the americas yeah for america sure, sure you know right. and, and here in new orleans certainly the caribbean plays a large part mm -hmm. and also um mexico plays a large part so this is a 
uh, a song that I heard a recording of. It's a Tomas Mendez um, tune from 1959. And um, then I've been really fortunate to work with a lot of international musicians. And I um, asked a friend of mine who is Mexican, I said, like, oh, have you ever heard of this song? Cucuru Paloma. And she goes, of course, everyone knows that song. It's a grandma song. And I was like, that's my genre. It's um, the grandma song? It's a grandma song. Like, everyone's grandmother, everyone's abuela knows it. Everyone, you they're, know. they're singing it while they're cooking. They're um, singing it while yeah, they're but it's, going to work. They're singing it. Well, it's, well you'll hear it. It's not, it's oh, a, it's I'll a recognize pretty, it. pretty slow song. So I don't uh, know that it's like, I'm singing this while I'm going uh, to work. Oh, maybe it's um, more of a lament then. Yeah, it's a lament. Okay, it's a beautiful, it right. okay. um, it's a beautiful lament, but it's, it's quite popular over um, Mexico and uh, in Latin America and, and much of South America. I, I learned these things on American Roots talking <laughs> to artists I like But you. it's also, I just think it was one of the most beautiful songs that I know and um, the words are, are really stunning. So um, we're gonna give it a try. Or this okay. is our rendition of it. This. Okay, and, and everybody out there in Radio Land, uh, give it a try to listen to, please. Yeah. <laughs> the Aurora Neelan Quartet. sufría por ella y hasta en su muerte la fe amando ay, 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 ay. canta
I love that. The voice of the dove. The voice of the dove. Yeah, the paloma. Yeah. Cucuruku paloma. Yeah. Uh, from Mexico. Yeah. Phenomenal. Thomas Mendez. Tomas Mendez, yeah. Tomas Mendez, yeah. yeah. Tomas Beautiful. Mendes. Amazing. Thank you. So uh, I know you love Bichet. I do, yeah. Why? What's it, what's it about him that makes him so important to you? Well, I think as a young instrumentalist who was um, coming to New Orleans, you know, I came to New Orleans in 2004, um, and I played the saxophone a little bit, but not mm. excellently, and I just think Bechet is one of the first original jazz saxophonists mm -hmm. from here in New Orleans. Yeah, he's um, both sort of avant and traditional. Yeah. There's blues, there's jazz. He was frustrated here. He <laughs> lived abroad yeah. and yeah, had sure. his, his temperaments. Right. Uh, and an old Creole family. I think one of his brothers was a dentist. And I think so, yeah. another was a plasterer. And, you know, yeah. so he could have been in that world. And he really developed, you know, alongside with so many other people, Bunk Johnson and Louis Armstrong. And mm -hmm. um, he really developed this sound of the early New Orleans music. And so yeah. I think it was really like the lessons that are in listening to Bechet for me as a young person who was, who was trying to learn the language um, were really valuable mm. to, to listen to him. He's, he's both a soloist, you know, like he really has a strong solo voice. So for me, the I think I've said this before, the- Big I'm, vibrato in that Yeah, too. and I, I'm not really interested in being a Bechet copyist. Um, mm. That's just not, I think there's validity to that, and but it's not really my bag. But I think the yeah. lessons that you can learn from Bechet of like his spirit with which he plays mm. and um, his compositions. He, Do you, know, you have any intel on why this is called Shag? Well, I imagine because there's a dance. That's what I was the thinking. Shag, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we're all a little distracted by the British vernacular of use of the term of course. here in who the 21st be? century. <laughs> who wouldn't? Be? Well, that could be about dancing too. Yeah. yeah okay. But I imagine that's that is why. Um, okay. But and then later in a group called the Royal Roses, which is a you know seven piece band that I lead, um, we wrote some original lyrics to it. Mm -hmm. When we started playing it, it it's it's really um, one of those. Bichet so you're going to be singing. Yeah, we'll sing a little bit. Well, that's wonderful. Shouting at the end. Oh, okay. Some shouting. Yeah. B Bechet's, Sydney Bechet, mm, Sydney Bechet's Shag with uh, lyrics by uh, Rora Nealon. Yeah. And the quartet.
Variation on the shag, <laughs> Sydney Bechet shag, uh, in the in the words of Aurora Neely. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of getting the shag together. Yeah, hey, thank you. Out there dancing with the shag. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. You know, uh, you've been singing uh, other people's lyrics mostly, yeah. and there you've added some lyrics uh, to Bechet's tune. Uh, but you've also, uh, you know, gone straight ahead and uh, been a songwriter. Yeah. And uh, now, what is how is that different from all these other things we've talked about? Singing other people's songs, playing the instrumental voice, working with a band. Um, you know, songs, when you write a song, it, it's pretty personal to write a song, it seems to me. Yeah, I think it's, it is personal. I mean, I think American songwriting is one of the most incredible, incredible art forms out there. You know, mm -hmm. it's really, um, and, and continues to be innovative to this day. Um, yeah. Um, so it's daunting to write your own songs, but it also is, um, I think, one of the most genuine things that we can do right. as music makers in this world is to continue to try to um, create things that are reflecting our own experiences. I was going to say, it takes you right, the world around us, right you know? to your own thoughts, yeah. your own feelings about yeah. the world around you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what song is uh, here on the uh, So agenda? we're going to do a song called Lavender that... Um, I wrote in the early pandemic time. <laughs> um, it's funny we think of now an early time, a mid time. I'm not sure. A yeah, current I, time. I paused when I said that. And I'll parenthetically say that uh, lavender is actually my favorite color. Is it? Well, you know, it's sort of it's sort of between red and blue. Oh, and, I, yeah. Uh, you know, you could think of it as a combo, but it has its own uh, solo integrity. It does. Many shades. Yeah. It's also a very beautiful, a pow very powerful herb, you know, so mm -hmm. I think there's there's that. But okay. as with many songs, I'm not going to say what it's about because it's about whatever you receive. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the accordion is coming back. The accordion is coming back, um, yes, because we don't have our guitarist, so I'm, I shall be the guitarist. Okay. On the accordion. On the accordion. Oh, that's an interesting concept. <laughs> <laughs> One.
the tower But the world, the world is burning I can see it in your eyes Not the way it's meant to be Cause somewhere there's a photograph of lavender Still growing wild and free Can you see it grow? Can you hear it bloom? Please tell me How does it feel?
It's such a great song. I, you know, I'm trying to figure out if it makes me sad or happy. That's a that's a big compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be somewhere in the middle between red and blue, maybe. But lavender has its own integrity. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there, you know, there's a big difference between dense lavender and pale lavender. I guess that's true of all colors. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that. You know, there's a. Um, I don't know where it is. I should know if I'm going to talk about this, but there's a place where they they a world seed bank where they keep the seeds of uh, every plant that they that that we as humans or botanists know exists and so um, I think uh, when the, in the song I think a lot about that um, in the future some you know some of these fauna and flora may not exist but that there's this idea that like somewhere there's still um, pieces of Lavender. vestiges of things that are growing <laughs> in the world things. despite yeah. uh, humanity's the problems cruelness yeah. towards the environment. Yeah. yeah. So, well, we know there's a song that's uh, out there that's been preserved. Yeah. In just the last few minutes. It's true. <laughs> the magic of recording. That's true. This is American Roots. I'm Nick Spitzer here in New Orleans uh, with the Aurora Nealon uh, Quartet. So happy to be here with you. So, you know, we think of New Orleans, uh, as you've been saying, and I think most people here know, is has lots of ties to the Caribbean. Uh, so French West Africa, the Congo, sure. uh, all, you know, to Europe, of course. Um, most people look at Haiti, I think, first and foremost because of the migrations. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's parallel universes over there in Martinique and a tremendous musical legacy there. So you've got something from Martinique. Yeah, this is a, a Beguine um, from Martinique that I learned off the, well, a, a friend of mine um, from Martinique gave me the, uh, an album called Album Begin d'Or, so Album of the Golden Begins, uh -huh. and it's called Nous les Cuisinières. It's sung in an old um, Creole French coming out of Martinique, and um, it, it, it says, we the cooks, or we the chefs, we are the unfortunate ones, but one day the tables will turn. And then in the chorus it says, open your mouths, make a beautiful shout. So it was sort of explained to me almost like a union organizing, a labor huh. organizing song. Yeah, and and it's a you know it's a great image of you know I mean it takes work to make great food. For People sure. do have to eat, <laughs> yeah. So it kind of pulls together some pretty serious social and human ideas. Yeah, yeah. All, All in the, the beginning. The, the laboring class. En you français know. creole, that's en cool, français. man. Or woman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <And> men. you. <laughs> One, two.
Chantal in Creole, singing in Creole French. Yeah. And, a, and a song that deals with uh, the food workers and the need for food in life. Serious topic. Something about these uh, Beguines, the Martinique Beguines, and some of the Caribbean sounds, it's so happy a tune. And, you know, and, and yet the topic's so serious. I think it kind of brings people along to feel good and then go, oh, yeah. Sure. Maybe I better listen to the words and yeah. what's going on out there. I mean, I think it's similar to New Orleans music. It's yeah. social. It's social music. You know, it's it's dance music. It's social music. It's music for the people. And some of the ways that you get the message out is is making music that is social music. Yeah, right. And tells some proverbial tales of truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all, all the time, people can dance to it. <laughs> it's a helpful thing to engage all those senses. For I have sure. to admit, I if we've been here a little while enjoying uh, the band and uh, hearing what you do. And I just noticed there's three candles burning over there <laughs> to your left. Uh, have they been burning the whole time? I think so. You know, I must have just been so distracted. Oh, my God. You, oh. Everyone's got, well, he's got, let's see, uh, we've got four candles back there by uh, by the drum kit. And uh, I, I guess that Brad has uh, Brad one has more. Brad has extra light. I think I see four, or maybe I'm having double vision and it's only two. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure in, in uh, by... Uh, BC from BR, as I'm starting to call you from <laughs> BC, Coogan from Baton Rouge, you've got three. Yeah, and, and the wonderful crew here lit us up. Oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. You mean they gave you the matches or did you bring the candles? No, they, no, just, they, they lit them and everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. You know, well, BC from BR is one of the first musicians that I met in New Orleans. You've been in New Orleans for, well, yeah, I came and saw oh. you play. You didn't mm -hmm. know me, but I, I knew you. Well, uh, you've been in New Orleans for how long? Uh, a little over 20 years. Yeah, long time. Yeah, the, uh, the cities are 80 miles apart, but they're probably 180 miles different. Uh, let me pick that up. <laughs> this, <laughs> the cities are 80 miles apart, but they're about 180 degrees different. Uh, you know, Baton Rouge is really more kind of in the, in the south, and New Orleans is a little more in the Gulf Caribbean world. But they kind of overlap here and there, too. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Well, my pleasure. Yeah. So, so oh, I'm looking back by Mr. Baseman. Well, how many candles do you have? I don't think I have any. What? Yeah. Oh, he has yeah. a plant. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought I saw a candle, but it's just reflecting in the uh, the ivories, the piano keys. Oh. Yeah, I just was fooled. Well, you never know. Well, not, thanks for having the candles burning. Uh, got a little bit of time left, and you've got somebody uh, from uh, the Scandinavian world. Yeah. Um, we're, we we want to uh, play, this is just one of, one of the most beautiful songs, compositions that I have encountered in my travels. Yeah. Um, and this is by an Icelandic guitarist. Actually, I'm out of Scandinavia. I'm, I'm sorry, we're, we're out there in the sea. We're out there, yeah. Well, I mean, we're talking Iceland, right? Yeah, Iceland, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, do they so say? I, uh, Iceland is green and Greenland is icy. <laughs> that um, is, so I, yeah. I, I should remember uh, that Iceland's not in Scandinavia. Good thing this is not a geography uh, class. <laughs> <laughs> I get Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Lafayette okay. And, and, you know, I feel, it, but yes, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> this is by uh, guitarist and composer Hilmar Jensen, mm -hmm. who is, um, I, I got to work with him in uh, Switzerland. I was teaching for a, a jazz festival mm -hmm. and that had a jazz camp. And um, they brought all these really wonderful performers who have been heavily involved in sort of the ECM scene and uh, experimental music that came out of New York in the 1980s, which is a big love of mine. Mm. Um, and Hilmar Jensen was one of those people that was there, and um, he presented this song um, for us as an ensemble to learn. And um, I just think it's a, such a beautiful song, and it's so always so great to play songs that are written by living composers who you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it is interesting to think of a song by somebody from Iceland being played in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the, the real reason for playing a song, it seems to me, uh, is is beauty uh, in this case. Especially. Yeah. And also highlights this, you know, this wonderful connection that, ha you know, musicians have been traveling and sharing sounds and cultures for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. So this kind of Highlights this really wonderful thing that happens when you um, get, when art makers are able to share their art and this is how culture is formed and changed and so. And this gets us to star in the instrumental voices of the Aurora Nealon Quartet. Yeah.
So great to hear Star. Um, you know, being a performer, uh, you know, you hear the term star and you think, uh, oh, that's somebody on a stage, but star could be someone in your life. A star is a way of imagining uh, imagining feelings. But, you know, I, I, I noticed that uh, you've said elsewhere that you're a shy person. Yeah. Yeah. But, but maybe you're a shy person playing a star. Maybe. In, in a humble way. Yeah. Not in an extravagant way. I mean, way. Uh, you know, I think there's many sides to all of us that we can mm -hmm. kind of rotate and show one side right. and then be like, whoa, that side. Yeah. Which is why it's useful. I found it's really lovely to be able to have different musical projects that right. serve different things. You know, like not in no one band is the everything band or the everything project. And Wait, that's these guys aren't the everything band? Sorry, guys. <laughs> They sound pretty everything they to me right now. They are pretty everything. They're almost I, I, everything. Yeah. <laughs> They're very close to everything. They're, but, they are. You know. Yeah, right. Well, um, Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, everyone is a star in their own sure. universe, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Well, I have to admit, I don't think anybody has um, ever uh, played uh, a Charles Ive tune or song uh, on American Roots Live, so I'm kind of intrigued, uh, having grown up not far from... Charles Ives, and always been sort of amazed by his, uh, what what should we say, modern yeah. ways at the turn of the century. He's and like the original mashup artist. Yeah. Know? All these like remixes that are being done, Charles Ives was doing. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's that is a piece of his is his piece of his thing is this bitonality going on at the same time and mm -hmm. and really reflecting, uh, you know, you hear all this kind of Americana reflected in his. In the changes. In his songs, yeah. yeah. In his songs and his textures. and the, Oh, come on. He's a great rocker. Early rocker <laughs> Early from rocker. the 1800s. So what's the tune? This is a tune. Uh, this is from his collection of songs. And this is a tune um, called Rather Sad. Or it's, it's from a collection called Memories. And there's one that goes, it's, the first movement's called Very Pleasant. And the second movement is Rather Sad. Okay. But rather sad is actually very beautiful. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna play that for American roots. From the street, a strain on my ear doth. Rather sad. A song by Charles Ive, which I have to admit, is, makes me happy to hear. Yeah, yeah, Charles Ives is <laughs> yeah, amazing. It, yeah, reaching into those emotions there. Charles Ives, the first, I think, uh, on American. <laughs> and, and a great Americanist uh, well, in music. And, no, that is true. And, and, and the changes.
Folks, it's been great to have you here on American Roots. We're so happy to be here with Artist Sound uh, down in the Ninth Ward in the studios and uh, enjoying the sounds. And uh, really want to thank uh, Matt Booth on bass, <laughs> Brad Webb uh, on drums, BC from BR, that's BC Coogan yeah. from Baton Rouge on piano, and of course, uh, Aurora Nealon on uh, clarinet and saxophone and accordion and vocals. Uh, it's been fabulous to spend some time with you here. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for having us. We're, we're all big fans of your show. Oh, well, good. Then I'll for just sure. keep doing it. Yeah, please keep doing it. Please keep doing it. It's, it's deeply important. And uh, what should we uh, play to say goodbye here on American Roots? We're going to play um, a tune that was recorded by Bechet. Bringing us back Sydney home. Bechet, Sydney Bechet, yeah. Bechet. New Orleanian, of course. Yeah, and Great this is just, a, just such a nice feeling to it. A nice, easy feeling. This is called the Georgia Cabin. Georgia Cabin. So he's uh, talking about the South also in his music, beyond New Orleans. For sure, yeah. The Georgia Cabin yeah. from the Aurora Nealon Quartet. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon with the Nick Spitzer American Roots Show, as well as the Aurora Needlands Quartet. We do hope that you enjoyed, and remember to join us at mps.gov jazz for more events, music, and news.
Thank you and have a great day.